would like to welcome you to BeMoreNews.com, the news before the news where we uncover the truth. Here in Black History Month, we have the first African-American female combat pilot, Vernie's Fly Girl Armor. How are you? I am absolutely fantastic and marv marvelously blessed. Thank Good. And, and we're here at the 25th Annual Black Engineer of the Year Awards in Washington, mm -hmm. D.C. Uh, a spectacular day. It is. It's absolutely <laughs> amazing. We're in Washington, D.C. It's 70 degrees in the middle of February. Blue skies, white clouds. It's a great day to go fly. But I'd, I'd rather be here at Black Engineer of the Year Awards because it's just that spectacular. That's awesome. How did you get the title Fly Girl? You know, that was not my real call sign when I was in the military. It was actually junk for junk in the, yes. And I did wonder why my commanding officer was looking at my trunk, but that's another story. So uh, people would refer to me as Fly Girl, uh, or you're, you were the woman in, you know, the, the flight suit. So it kind of just stuck, and, you know, people brand you. You don't brand yourself. So uh, Bernice Fly Girl Armor now. Well, how, you know, tell us about it. What was your tour of duty like? So I will give you a snapshot of um, how, how I got to be where I am. At the age of four, I did want to be a police officer that rode a horse downtown. Uh, that was my passion and dream in life. I ended up seeing a black woman in a flight suit while I was involved in ROTC in college. And seeing that woman for those five minutes completely changed my life. Uh, I did go on to be a police officer, rode Harleys downtown, steal horses, motorcycles. But I decided that I could always be a cop, couldn't always be a combat pilot. So I didn't uh, join the Marines, I became a Marine. We don't take applications, just commitments. But after a couple years, uh, excuse me, a couple tours overseas, I came back and ended up being America's first African American female combat pilot. I'd gone from beat cop to combat pilot in three years. And what I discovered when I returned home was that a lot of people have dreams and a lot of people want to create those breakthroughs. They just don't exactly know how. So now, uh, I've been out of the Marine Corps now for a little over three and a half years, and I travel around, whether it's keynote seminars, coaching, showing you how to unleash the combat pilot inside and break your own personal sound barrier. So I'm blessed to do what I love doing, wake up every morning to the sun. It's amazing, but everybody can do what they want to do. I firmly believe that. From the moment I was introduced to you, the very first question that came to my mind is, what do you say to little African-American girls as to what you know, what they can and cannot, or what they can accomplish, or anything along the lines of achievement. You know, I don't tell them what they can or can't do. And actually, it's little girls, little boys, grown women, and grown men. Because uh, even we adults have dreams out there that we still want to achieve. And if I ask, what is it that you want to do, and you have an answer when you give it back to me, I don't just stop there. I ask, how? Because the how is the part that we really need to get down. The execution. Everybody can talk about what they want, but how do we do it? How do we execute? And that's where we really need to dig in and make it happen. Well, how, how far back did this combat pilot dream go for you? I was actually in my 20s in college when I saw the woman in the flight suit. Uh, I knew that I wanted to be that cop, you know, that rode the horse downtown. So, like I said, I did go and achieve that dream. But, uh, you know, it, it all boils down to role models and mentors. Seeing a woman for five minutes didn't even want to go to the aviation tent under this thing that black people don't fly. You know, Tuskegee Airmen, Bessie Coleman, Willa Brown. But let me say it's about access and exposure. What are you giving yourself access to? What are you exposing yourself to? And opening yourself to discovery. We have a habit of saying, I don't like that, and we haven't even tried it. Open yourself to discovery. So that woman that day planted a very strong seed. And I'm here with you doing this interview and this videotape because of that. Years later, I don't know her name, don't know anything about her, don't know where she's from. But in those five minutes, I could touch her, talk to her, ask her questions. It was the tangibility of the possibility. It was real. It wasn't MTV or BET. It was my reality. Well, here's the next logical question, considering mm -hmm. that you are a first. Your thoughts on the first African-American president? Absolutely amazing. Freshman senator, the only African-American senator. That's zero to breakthrough right there. <laughs> when I say combat pilot to or cop to combat pilot in three years, freshman senator or president of the United States, breaking barriers. There's still a lot of work to do. Um, but what an amazing role models. I actually heard a mother say to a son, 
pull your pants up. You know, do you want to walk around looking like that? He said, no, I want to be like the president. And he pulled his pants up. Now that is powerful. When before you could tell someone to pull their pants up and they would just look at you like they were crazy. Did anyone ever tell you that you could not accomplish something? Yes. Uh, my name is Marcia. Uh, if they did, it didn't impact me or it didn't matter because my mom and uh, <laughs> my mom, my parents, my support network never told me that. I always knew I could do anything. Okay. So anything that folks outside of that sphere would say didn't have an impact. There were things that my parents didn't want me to do. They didn't want me to be a cop. They didn't want me to be a Marine. They didn't want me to go to combat. Uh, but they knew I was dedicated to it, and I really wanted to do it. So they supported me. They just wanted me to be happy. Okay. Any thoughts? Any final thoughts? Black Engineer of the Year Awards, uh, Dr. Tyrone Taborn, Marsha Jews, and Marsha Jews, and Tyrone Taborn. <laughs> <laughs> We have to put our money where our mouth is. We have to put resources. If we want to talk about filling the pipeline, then we need to do something to fill the pipeline. If we want to educate our youth, then we have to put those resources in place to educate our youth. Do what average people do, you'll have what average people have. And I don't want to be average, do you? So what are we doing to use a breakthrough mentality to create our breakthrough reality? Okay, I'm Fly girl signing off. Okay, I'm letting you know up front, we're stealing some of those lines. How can people They're get They're trademarked. Uh, okay. No. <laughs> we certainly don't want the uh, copter, uh, copter coming for us. Hey, visit my website, VerniceArmor.com. You can look and take anything you want. The information I put out there is for people to use to create the breakthroughs for their lives. So, VerniceArmor.com. I'm on Facebook. Twitter is the number zero, T-O, breakthrough. And the coolest thing you can do is text fly girl f l y g i r l all one word fly girl to 90210 we'll be instantly connected you'll get all my contact information i look forward to seeing you on the other side good deal we really admire you thank you for your time hey, you're welcome you're cleared high keep watching be more news.com the news before the news where we uncover the truth